Let's shift to your apprenticeship program then. Um, break it down for me. What's the what's the kind of general overview? You you got somebody that's like, what are you talking about your IBEW 136 apprenticeship program? What do you tell people? Okay, it, it's a five year program. Uh, you uh, earn while you learn. Like I said just a minute ago, there is no tuition. If you complete our program. We have a deal worked out with uh, uh, the, some of the uh, state colleges around where you'll have, you'll end up with uh, 50, I think it's either 52 or 54 credit hours towards a two year degree. Uh, there's a, another deal with the University of Alabama where you could take that the credits and apply, I, I believe you get 40 something hours credit towards a four year degree. Um, basically, the two-year degree, you've got everything you need when you graduate except your English classes and, uh, you know, those kind of things that, as a building trades apprenticeship, we're not going to dig into and teach. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to write an essay on, you know, something for, the, for our apprenticeship. Right. But if you if you so choose to go that route, you can actually even get a two year degree that way. Uh, it's a fantastic program. Uh, it carries you through uh, absolutely not knowing what a screwdriver is all the way through to uh, you know there, there's nothing in the electrical industry that should intimidate you mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be able to figure out and move on and and, and actually deal with. Uh, in the process of that, uh, you take. Uh, classes uh, in the different parts of our industry. We've got motor control labs, we've got transformer labs, fire alarm labs, that sort of thing. And as you progress through there, you're taking uh, these classes and then going back and doing a uh, apprentice competency test so that uh, there are photographic evidence that, that you have obtained uh, the knowledge level that you're here that is necessary in this in this particular field and that's always there that's something nobody can take away from you mm -hmm. it's Matt Dudley's our director and he has taken what was a warehouse facility over by the airport for FedEx we bought that building several years ago, and he has turned it into a top-notch school. And and I'd be happy to let anybody tour that place and put it up against any other school, craft training school in the state of Alabama. Yeah. I, it does a fantastic job. And and you mentioned that, that y'all bought it, and that's one of the things that, that I feel like is so um, so – so cool about the trades apprenticeship programs is that um uh, you know i wouldn't be opposed to the trades getting taxpayer funding for their apprenticeship program but the fact of the matter is that that they don't they have like their own buildings they have their own instructors they have uh you know it it is the trade unions pay for pay for it all a hundred percent whereas a lot of these even some of these non-union apprenticeship programs they actually do their training in we, we talked a couple weeks ago about this non-union apprenticeship program they're partnering with calhoun community college and what does that mean that's a taxpayer subsidy for a non-union apprenticeship program that is ultimately going to cost the apprentice tuition and and they're going to end up making less money in the long term i mean it, it and with the, less training yeah frankly. less less training more cost to the taxpayer on both ends because you're subsidizing their education and then the low wages on the other end because you're going to have to pay for benefit pro government benefit programs for these people who can't afford you know it's just the the union apprenticeship programs are really really uh, an an amazing example of workers coming to like workers providing for workers and and lifting each other up and i i and so can you talk about the the type of benefit packages like what can an apprentice expect to make and receive as benefits during their apprenticeship and then after they graduate yeah with with us and i can speak on the ibw i'm not 
up to date on other crafts and other locals in our area and what their their plans are uh, for uh, us a brand new green uh, never been on an electrical project doesn't know what a screwdriver is uh, starts out at 50 percent of a journeyman wage uh, he'll uh, earn uh, single coverage insurance at first for the first year uh, that is contractor paid for he earns uh, after his second year starts to earn family coverage insurance so that as a young man, he can afford to get married, afford to start building a family. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, two defined benefit pensions and one defined contribution pension that they will all participate in. Uh, one of the two defined benefit uh, pensions is attached to his dues payment. A portion of his dues payment goes to it. But the other is uh, a 100% contractor contribution where 3% of his gross wages goes in. And it's based on number of hours worked each year as to earn in a year of service credit. And at the end of his career, they add up all his service credits and um, pay him a monthly uh, check for the rest of his life based on those number of years of service credits. And then we have a defined contribution and it slowly increases. Uh, that contribution rate slowly increases as he progresses through the apprenticeship and all the way up to journeyman, uh, steadily getting larger uh, each year based on an hourly, uh, each man hour they work and they have a contribution that goes into it. Over the 40 years, this is the Southern Electrical Retirement Fund that it's deposited into. And over the 40 years that it's 42, 43 years it's been in, in, in existence, it averages somewhere around just below 8% interest that it's paid every year on average over that. So uh, just figuring that by the time you, uh, you, you work 40 hours a year through your career go in at 20 years old very easily you're you're ready to retire as a million uh with that with that fund if it you know mm -hmm. pays that average and right continues on and, and 40 years is a pretty good pretty good look back to say that's a that's a realistic average for us to expect from it now yeah and and what's y'all's what's y'all's journeyman wage at local 136 German wage at 136 currently is $27 an hour, but we're in negotiations now for the next, uh, hopefully, a three-year agreement. Uh, that was Bill Blackman, business agent for IBEW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 136. I wanted to mention really quick before we went to the next topic, um, there was a study out of the Illinois Economic Policy Institute about union construct union apprenticeship programs versus non-union apprenticeship programs for construction workers and it was really amazing listen to this quote the labor market outcomes of union construction workers are competitive with workers with college degrees while non-union construction workers are only on par with workers with high school diplomas what does that mean union construction workers earn about sixty thousand dollars a year on average which is 46% more than non-union construction workers at $40,000 a year. 89% of union construction workers have health insurance compared with just 55% of non-union construction workers, workers, which is a 34% difference. And among all workers with associate's degrees and bachelor's degrees, average incomes range from 48000 to 68000 And private health insurance coverage ranges from 84% to 90%. So that these are, you know, when we're talking about these DOL accredited apprenticeship programs, a lot of those are going to be, most of those are going to be union apprenticeship programs. And the benefit for the workers is, is, is just what I laid out for you there. It's very I mean, clear. A union construction worker is going to be making about what a, uh, what a, what somebody with a bachelor's degree does. And you cannot, and you know, all these people, they go around to high schools and they talk about, oh, the trades are a path to middle class. Trades are a path to the, to the middle class. And it's like, there's a, there's an asterisk there. 
Because if you're a non-union construction worker, we talked a couple weeks ago about how something like 50% of non-union construction workers are on some sort of government assistance. Non-union construction work is not necessarily a path to the, to the middle class, but union construction work is, and that's why we want to push that. So thanks again, Bill, for taking the time to talk yeah, to us. Yeah, and I know we're going to touch on schools later, mm-hmm. so I, w- I won't belabor the point, but this is an, uh, just another good time yes. to remind folks that our schools need to be working with folks like Bill to get these young folks who are you know in high school into this pipeline so yep. that they, they can enter – a real accredited apprenticeship and have those opportunities you just laid out. Support for the Valley Labor Report comes from the International Federation of Professional and Technical Engineers Union. Learn more by visiting www.ifpte.org.